Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unity Zor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about light um, from the perspective of energy which it carries. Uh, so this is the second um, lecture in this category. Uh, the first one I was trying to introduce you to a concept of light among other related to radiation etc. concepts. Now I will talk about light from how we understand the nature of light from historical perspective. So this will be um, a lecture about the very first attempt to understand what actual light is. Now this lecture is part of the course uh, presented uh, on unizor.com. Uh, the name of the course is Physics for, teen, um, for Teens. Yes, um, there is a prerequisite course which is Math for Teens on the same website. All courses are free, there are no ads, so you can freely um, um, use them. And uh, if you have found this lecture somewhere else, like on the YouTube, for instance, searching it, uh, I would still suggest you to go to the website and approach the whole thing from the whole course perspective, because this lecture is part of the course, which means there is some logical connection between this lecture and the previous one, uh, and the following one, etc. And again, as I was saying, there is a prerequisite course, which is also on the website. So go to the website, unizor.com. Okay, so, today we will talk about the first attempt to understand what light actually is. Well, let me just make a little philosophical excurs. Um, how do we build our understanding of anything which is in, in the nature around us? Well, we build the model. So, we are assuming that things are such and such. And then we are trying to make some logical um, uh, relations, re relations between this model and some other models. We are trying to analyze whether this particular model explains qualitatively and quantitatively certain um, realities which we observe. And if it does, well, it means that the model kind of works. And uh, we are using this model to predict even certain qualities of whatever the subject of our research is. And again, if later on we will realize that, yes, these qualities which we have predicted really do exist as well, well, that's the confirmation that the model is right. But again, we're only talking about the model. How it is in reality, it's, it's a big question, we don't really know, but our models might represent quite well, in some cases, what the reality is. For example, Newtonian mechanics uh, represented quite well whatever we are observing as far as motion uh, around us. Well, when we were approaching certain um, boundaries, we have found out that not, not exactly, things not exactly the same as predicted by Newtonian mechanics. The relativistic mechanics came along, then when we went to a um, microscopic uh, structure of the matter, we also have found out that our model is lacking certain things which we observe and we needed some explanation, we built new models. So, we are talking about modeling of what actually light is. And the first one, the model which uh, was developed by Newton, well, develop maybe it's a strong um, word, he just suggested that maybe the light is such and such. And then he was trying to explain whether certain qualities of light can be basically related to whatever the model he has built. So what's his model? Well, the model is that the light is basically consists of very small particles. So if this is the source of light, so these small particles are carrying basically the light, and they are coming into human eye, for instance, and they hit the the back of the eye, the retina, whatever. I, I don't know if they understood what retina actually is at the time. Anyway they hit the eye uh, which agitates nerves and then it goes to the brain and we feel it 
um, we sense it as as the light. Now, um, it was a natural kind of a way of thinking about light at the time. Don't forget, it was before we knew anything about electricity, for instance, or uh, the the electric bulb or whatever. So, um, so that was basically his hypothesis. Now, all these tiny um, particles of light, he called them uh, corpuscles, corpuscles, and the whole theory was called corpus corpus corpuscular, <laughs> corpuscular theory of light, corpuscular, based on corpuscles. All right, so corpuscular theory of light is basically a very mechanical view onto light. So if every particular um, particles, I'll, I'll rather use particles instead of corpuscles. Uh, uh, so every particular uh, particle of light, it has certain mass, it has speed, uh, it has size, it has kinetic energy. I mean, that was all very, as I was saying, mechanistic type of type of approach which Newton has suggested. All right, so now he has to explain with this model different things which we are observing about the light. So our sense of light he did explain. Great. Now, um, how can um, we explain the different colors, for instance? Well, the explanation which Newton has suggested was that these particles have different sizes. Now, every size um, agitates our um, cells in, in the retina in different ways, and that's why we perceive it as different colors. Well, that's a plausible explanation. All right. So, the colors are explained. Also, uh, there is a very simple explanation of um, reflection, for instance. If you have the beam of light here, and this is the mirror, it reflects. So, basically the light particle behaves like elastic little ball. So, it's an elastic reflection. Nothing wrong with that. Seems to be working fine. Okay. Now, um, there is another very important aspect which Newton observed. Um, that's a refraction. So, if you have, for instance, air and water, and there is a light here, then it changes direction. And, yes, that was obviously observed many times. How to explain this? Well, the suggestion which Newton actually made was that different medium, in this case air and water, for instance, um, they are basically slowing down these uh, particles of light in different ways. So he suggested that the change of the speed of, uh, of these uh, corpuscles, these particles of light, is the reason why the angle is changing when this particular event occurs. So that's the refraction. Um, if with a reflection the model of uh, elastic ball really works quite well, with the refraction it's not exactly as clear, at least to me, that different speed can explain the change of the angle. But that was his explanation. All right, um, what else? Well, uh, another thing which he basically observed was that the white color is the combination of different uh, elementary colors like red, green, blue, etc. Now the way how to observe it was to um, to send the light through a prism, right? So we know if this is a prism and if this is the white light then it goes to different colors. Something with blue, something with red, green, etc. So, 
how can that be explained? Well, this is basically a, a refraction. So the, uh, the light goes in different ways. Different um, particles, since they have different masses, different sizes, they are refracted differently at, on, at each uh, boundary between the air and the, and the glass, for instance. So that was his explanation, which might work, actually. Um, now, I would like to devote certain um, amount of time in this lecture to explain why this model is really insufficient. And there are certain known at that time, or almost at that time, um, things about light, which the theory cannot really explain, which basically makes this theory kind of insufficient. All right, so right now I will talk about certain things which we observe with the light, which just cannot be explained using this particular uh, uh, corpuscular theory of light. Okay, here they are. I will mention three of them, and there are others actually. Now, the first thing is, it's called um, diffraction. If you have a very small uh, hole and you put the light, then what you will see on this screen, well, if you will look from this side, if this is your screen, and this is how light goes, what's interesting is you will see concentric circles with changing from uh, bright to dark, bright to dark, bright to dark, etc. It's called diffraction. Well, obviously, corpuscular theory cannot explain this particular um, case of uh, property of light. So the light somehow, by just going through this particular hole, it's a small hole supposed to be, then it goes somehow in different ways and again the dark are, uh, areas are changing uh, with the light one. So this is the view from here, this is the light, and this is how the whole experiment. Now this is called diffraction and it looks like something is happening on the uh, edge of this hole and the smaller the hole the more um, visible these concentric circles are. Now, in the notes for this lecture, and by the way, I, I forgot to mention it, but every lecture on unisor.com has textual notes and certain references. So, <coughs> among, the, among the notes, the notes for this particular lecture con c contains a picture how this thing really uh, looks like when there is a red light, and the red light actually when it's going through this small hole produces this picture of uh, bright red and, and dark concentric circles. So, this cannot be explained by the Newtonian uh, uh, corpuscular theory, uh, and that was one of the reasons for, well, developing some other things which we will talk about in next lecture. Okay, the next experiment, which again defies the corpuscular theory, <coughs> is interference. Now, interference is if you have two holes and you have light here. What's interesting is that we will have certain waves Again, dark and, uh, and light uh, areas on the screen, which you have here. Again, in my notes, I have a picture how it looks in reality. I'm just explaining this, but uh, you will see it there. Obviously, if I had certain equipment th uh, here, I would be able to present it to you. I don't have any equipment. It's purely theoretical <coughs> course, but picture always uh, works. 
so I present the picture over there and I'm sure you can find uh, many many different examples on, on YouTube etc how these uh, interference pictures are developed so this is another uh, property of light which cannot be explained by crepuscular theory I mean if the crepuscular theory w was right then all you would see here was on the screen one bright spot and another bright spot and everything else would be dark around it right but in reality it's very very complicated interference picture so to speak now the next and the last experiment is the following let's say you have a straight uh, ray of light now let's position here a crystal of uh, thermaline it's some kind of a crystal it's green uh, of a green color etc well the light goes there it becomes green actually but then it goes no problems now let's put another uh, thermaline, thermaline crystal on, on, on its way so we have two of them well if we are lucky we will see the light goes through this again but now let's turn this so we will turn it around this axis which coincides with the um, um, with the light well we will see that this particular and this is a screen so we will see that light which is projected onto this screen will actually change from from relatively bright to darker and darker and at some at some moment it disappears again and then as we continue rotating it will start getting brighter and brighter again so the one rotation actually will result in changing from bright to dark and then to bright again how can that be explained in crepuscular theory it's completely impossible the analogy um, of this I can say the following if you have a slot and then you have a rope here which you are rotating in all the different ways but it, it after it goes to a slot it will go only along the slot up and down up and down so your circular rotation if there is no uh, friction obviously uh, after it goes through the slot all these circular rotations turn to a flat which correspond to a slot right so it's called polarization of light so it looks like this thing has a slot or somehow all the whatever um, uh, different uh, oscillation of light now I'm talking about oscillation of light which means it's an introduction to the wave theory which will be next lecture so all the different movements within these um, within this uh, array of light are somehow um, going through something which is similar to this slot and that's why only these vertical let's say um, uh, movements of these uh, particles uh, are going through but then if this has a slot in exactly the same position it goes through but if it will s change it 90 degree obviously it will not go through a different slot right and there is no light here so it looks like we are talking about waves and that's exactly what can be an explanation of the diffraction which I was talking before interference and in this case polarization of light now this wave theory would be the subject of my next lecture um, and meanwhile I just wanted to show certain examples of certain properties of light which um, most of the, I think they were known at the time of Newton or at least at the end of uh, uh, his career um, and, and people realized that crepuscular theory 
is not exactly a good model of what's happening um, with the light. And again, I'm talking about modeling. Nobody is talking about how it is re in reality. Nobody knows this, but we are building models. Newton built his model of light as a crepuscular theory, and it turns out to be insufficient. So the next lecture will be about the next step, and there will be the next step, and the next step, etc. So um, I do suggest you to go to the unizor.com, um, read the explanation uh, notes actually which uh, accompany this particular lecture. So you go to physics for teens, uh, energy, and there is an energy of light, and this is a lecture uh, about uh, light, light as corpuscles. So thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>